Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are actually going to be doing two recipes in one. Now, everyone that I know loves caramel apples. And honestly, they are my favorite thing. So we're going to actually kind of combine those two, something like that, along with something I really enjoy, cake. Now it's not going to be a normal cake recipe, but it's going to be a spiced caramel apple cinnamon cake. More like a coffee cake kind of a deal, but it's super yummy, so let's go ahead and try it out. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm actually going to start on my caramel sauce that's going to go on top, along with what I'm going to use to dip my caramel apples on with. So what you're going to need is you're going to need one cup butter, we're going to need one cup of the maple syrup, two cups brown sugar, and then we're also going to need one can of sweetened condensed milk. This is going to create our caramel sauce good for dipping. This is going to take a little while to go ahead and make. It's going to be made on a medium heat in a medium sized saucepan. For about 30 to 40 minutes you're going to let it bake, or sorry, heat up and mix together. Once it is completely combined and thickened after those 30 to 40 minutes, you're going to add your vanilla extract. We're going to add about one teaspoon of that into our mixture and we're going to set it aside to cool. While that's being made, we're going to go ahead and start on our cake recipe. Today, we kind of have a lot of ingredients here, but don't be discouraged. It's going to be super simple, I promise. So we're going to go ahead and start off with our two eggs. Right here, we're going to have those at room temperature, and we're going to combine that with some oil. I am using coconut oil, and that is why it kind of looks like a weird snowball. No other way to describe it, honestly. We're going to add that in with our egg, so I'm going to do that right now. It might be a little hard to get this out, so I'm going to grab a spoon. Now, you can use vegetable oil if you like. I personally just prefer coconut oil, but again, up to you. You only need a cup though, so keep that in mind. So I'm gonna put that to the side. We're gonna take our first egg, crack that in, like so, and our next one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this for a few minutes, just till it's really well combined, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to do next. During this time, go ahead and check on your caramel and give it a quick stir, okay? We break it. After this is all mixed and you checked on your caramel, don't forget to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I keep forgetting to tell you guys at the beginning, so this is me telling you right now, stop what you're doing, go preheat that oven, because it ain't bacon if it's not preheat, or heated up, you know? So next up, with this yummy looking <laughs> mixture of coconut oil and eggs, we're going to go ahead and add our next few ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and add our vanilla. We're going to add one tablespoon right in there. And we're going to add our sugars. Today I'm going to be using granulated sugar and then I'm using a golden brown, brown sugar for the other part of the sugar. You only need three-fourths cup of each. So just go ahead and add those now. So again, the golden brown, brown sugar and then the granulated. There really isn't a difference for this recipe, no matter what brown sugar you use. I just prefer the golden brown for this one. So add that in, and we're gonna start mixing it again, okay? So just go ahead and give it a quick mix. I'm gonna go ahead and add in our dry ingredients right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the smaller ones, just because I don't wanna deal with all of the flour just yet. So we're gonna start off with half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I know you can't really see it, but it's in there. So we're going to add that in. We're going to go ahead and add three teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Yummy, yummy. And then we're going to also add our baking soda. Don't use baking powder. It won't turn out the same. I can't explain it to you. It just won't. <laughs> One teaspoon baking soda. And then we're going to go ahead and give that all a mix before we add in the flour. Okay, on top of that, I forgot to mention also, we're going to want to add just a tiny pinch of salt, not much at all. And then we're going to add our flour. During this time though, whenever we see it mixing, don't forget to start stirring your caramel. We don't want that to burn. But for now, two cups of your flour is going to be added in. 
just little by little so that it doesn't, you know, have a flower explode. Flower explosion like that. So medium heat, mix it for a little bit and keep adding little by little. Okay, so now that our batter looks somewhat like this, we're gonna go ahead and add our apples. This recipe, you can kind of add however many you want. Depends on how many you wanna find while you're taking a bite. I'm gonna go ahead and do two cups of apples, which are, yeah, about two cups, about two medium to large size apples. You can go ahead and only do one cup, it's really up to you. But I'm just gonna add those in half of them first, and then we're just gonna fold them in. Try and get them nice and even across the batter. So now we're gonna take a pan about nine by 13 size, and we're gonna go ahead and just pour our mixture right in. Might be a little hard to pour, so actually just kinda scoop it out if you have to. All the apples are coming out first, that's okay. Just scoop it all out. Now, although the preparation for this recipe was really fast and really easy, the baking process is gonna take a little longer. It is gonna take about 40, 35 to 40 minutes for this to go ahead and bake fully. So go watch some TV or go, go watch one of my other videos, try some new stuff out. But honestly, this is perfect for the holiday season coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas. If you're not really a pie person, you can go ahead and make something like this. Really similar to a coffee cake, but it just has a bit more of like an apple pie-ish taste without the crust. And just remember guys, this is all gluten free. You can also make it vegan by replacing, you know, the eggs. There's no milk in this recipe other than the butter for the caramel. If you can't have milk at all or any kind of dairy product, you can go ahead and substitute that. But I do suggest using something like super similar just because the caramel is going to turn out different if you use something else. All right, so once you're battered, is spread pretty evenly like so. I'm gonna add a few more apples just sprinkled on top but once you're done with that we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the oven for that 35 to 40 ish minutes. So I'll go ahead and see you once we're done with that. Okay? Cool. So I didn't prepare entirely for the caramel apples. I don't have any sticks to place in the apple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip it in the caramel, Let's put it on a plate. Okay, I know the last time we saw each other was putting the cake in the oven, but this is what your caramel should look like. It may have a little bit of a layer on top when it cools down, that's okay. Just make sure that you are stirring it and it looks nice and smooth like that. So we're going to go ahead and try and make a caramel apple. I will tell you guys right now, this is my first time making an actual caramel apple. So I'm going to hold it by the stem and try and dip it and hope for the best. I'm just going to go straight in, I guess. And then... Just kind of drizzle some on top too, like so. A better way of doing this would be to actually have sticks for your apples and have smaller apples. Um, they recommend doing Granny Smith since it's more of a sour apple to combine with the sweetness. I just like red apples. So we're going to stick with that. And we're going to go ahead, woo, finish it off, kind of let it drip on the sides. 
That actually looks really good. Hold on, let me... Please don't fall. It's just kind of let it drip. I'm gonna transfer it onto a plate. And there you have a caramel apple. Obviously, you can remove the stem and put an actual stick in it so it's a little easier to dip. And then obviously you can dip it into any kind of topping, whether it's sprinkles, M&Ms, any kind of like peanuts, cashews, any of that. So we're going to go ahead and let that cool down and we'll cut into that once we also have our cake out of the oven. I still have about 10 more minutes, so we're going to wait on that. And then we're going to go ahead and put our caramel onto our cake. So I'll see you in a second. So I got a little impatient and kind of already got a piece. <laughs> and forgot to show me trying it. So that's why it's kind of looked destroyed. But oh my gosh, it is so freaking good. Like it's legit like an apple pie, but it's cake. And I cannot explain to you how happy I am about that because for me, like apple pie, too much crust for me. I still love it, but this, 10 times better with the caramel on top. I just did a light drizzle on top of mine, but you could go ham on the caramel and it will taste so good. But here, I'll do another taste test because oh my God. Mm. So good. And the apples are like cooked, so it's just, I love these. There's not too much cinnamon, not too much like spice in it at all. It's just right. I love this recipe. And honestly, like, I really suggest giving this one a try. Go ahead and even if you don't make the caramel like I did, even if you just, you know, get a bottle of the caramel drizzle, it will still taste amazing. I promise. So go ahead and try this recipe out. Let me know how it turns out down in the description below or on my Instagram. I'll leave that also in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and go ahead and don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Have an amazing day, you guys, and next time we'll be trying our hand at pie, so stay tuned for that. Have a nice day. Bye!